Right, unless you're giving. If you're giving, praise God. God will bless you. God will bless your 11-year-old ministry. <laughs> these are for people who are going to be giving. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill these pledge cards out today. We'll give them in the offering today. And then that money will be due uh, the Sunday uh, closest to the 15th. All right? Of January. Okay? Also, uh, if you're planning on attending the five-year celebration dinner after church on Sunday, then you will need to get your money and your RSVP into Brother Tom ASAP. We've got to have that tonight, okay, because we're going to have to have a count in before Sunday. Also, we're going to ask Sister Lisa to come to do an announcement for Temple Builders. And while she's on her way, we're also going to announce the Christmas Cantata, December 16th at 6 p.m. Please see Sister Lyle to sign up, participate, play, uh, and the practice for that will be the 15th. And we're going to ask Sister Lisa to announce about Temple Builders. Hi. Um, we're at Temple Builders is teaming up with the youth, and we're going to be doing a fundraiser called Thin It to Win It. So for everybody that has their New Year's resolution starting in January, we're going to have two teams. The teams are going to compete for whoever can lose the most weight, and we're going to have sponsors. We're going to need people in the church to sponsor to, to donate money per pound whatever team um, loses. And then the losing team has to serve the winning team dinner. So we're going to need sponsors and people that are willing to sign up. We need at least eight people willing to sign up to lose the weight. And it doesn't matter if you only got five or ten pounds to lose, whatever it is. And then we're going to have people sponsor to donate money, however much you want to donate per pound per team. So if you can see me tonight, I'll have rules and um, have a sign-up sheet for you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sister Lisa. Also, we have uh, our Saturday church fellowship and game night at Vintage Oaks from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. this Saturday. Please bring snacks, finger foods, and drinks. Uh, also, this place that we're going is not set up for children, so please bring something to occupy them, okay? Uh, we don't want to have to, you know, we understand we're a family. Family takes care of family and helps family, but we need to have something for them to do, okay? That's five hours. We don't want them sitting there. They're not going to twiddle their thumbs for five hours, okay? So let's all team up, and if you bring children, please please bring something for them to do. Youth service this Friday night at 7 p.m. Also, December 14th, youth Christmas party at our house. Uh, we'll be having a white elephant gift exchange, um, and so everybody will need to bring something maybe that you already own that's worth about $10. And if you have any questions about that, uh, you can see Sister Calandra. Also, a ladies' skirt exchange, 10 a.m. this Saturday. Uh, that's for all the ladies who'd like to be involved. They're going to be exchanging skirts. Maybe you need a skirt. Maybe you need two skirts. Maybe you want to trade some out. Be there. Bring your skirts. All right. Also, uh, there are a few cameras in the service, okay? We're broadcasting uh, to people uh, that, are, that are miles away, okay? So we need to be conscious of these cameras. Uh, we ask that you not, uh, you, know, you know, be that guy that stands right in there and waves. Don't be that guy, okay? Don't be that gal, okay? We need to be conscious that people are trying to see the sign language through theirs, okay? So we need to try to not block this, okay? Amen. How many going to help me with that? Everybody going to help? Okay. We ask again that you please set all electronic devices on a non-audible setting so as to not interrupt service. And I apologize for the lengthy announcements, but I'm ready to worship. Are you ready to worship? Praise God. Let's do that right now. Hallelujah.
Jesus. Lord, you're so holy. You're so mighty. You're so righteous, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We're going to give you just a quick second to prepare your tithes and offerings and give you a chance to give tonight. Amen. Praise God. I'm so thankful that I have something to give that I have something to give. Amen? There might have been a time that you didn't, but I'm glad tonight I do. Maybe you don't tonight. You will next time. Amen? Praise God. Also, if you have your pledge cards, please fill those out. Drop those in the bucket. Amen? Continue to worship with us as you bring those. Water you turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one None like you. Why in the darkness you shine? Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None like you. I got a greater. I got a stronger. God, you are higher than any other. I got a healer. Awesome and power, our God, our God. Water you turn into wine. Open, open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. No, none like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one. Awesome the power I got, I got, I got is greater, I got is stronger, God you are higher than any other, I got is healer, awesome the power I got, I got, water you turn into wine, open, open the eyes of the blind, there's no one like you. The darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than any other our God is healer awesome in power our God our God I got a stronger God, you are higher than any other. I got a healer, awesome in power. I got, I got water, you turn into wine. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of the blind, there's no one like you, Jesus. 
Worship the God. at the voice of God. Come on, we're lifting up the one who is mighty, who is the greatest. Oh, he is awesome. Hallelujah. 
And if you have a need in your life, I want you to know he wants to save you. He wants to heal you. He wants to provide for you whatever your need is. He's a good God. Hallelujah. We're going to take just a moment here. We're glad to have Brother Sister Erickson with us. He's going to be ministering in this service. But if there's someone here today and you're in pain, you're sick, or you got a situation you want to be anointed and pray over, we ask you to come to the front at this time. And we're going to pray over you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. Come on, that's a name that's above every name. There's healing in that name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
with such power in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody keep uttering that name, Jesus. 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 Oh, let your healing virtue flow, Lord Jesus. Bring forth deliverance. Oh, let Lord healing come. Strengthen tonight in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we speak wholeness and wellness in the name of Jesus. Oh, how glorious you are, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, what doctors can't do, what medicine can't do, Jesus can do. Hallelujah. We just need to put our faith in Him. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. We're glad that you're here tonight. We're especially delighted to have Brother and Sister Erickson with us tonight. They have been um, pretty much lifetime friends. I guess when you talk about over 25 years, it becomes lifetime. Part of it. We're, we're glad that they're passing through St. Joel and that they're able to be with us tonight. And um, We enjoy their friendship, their fellowship. And um, Sister Erickson, we want you to greet us first. I know you don't always get that. You can come up here or I'll give you a mic either way. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. We give honor to Pastor and Sister Billingsley. And I'm thinking it's closer to 30 years, maybe, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, way back in New York State. So they've been friends with us a long time, and we, we respect them. And we, we hear your five, five years they've been here already. You are, you are very blessed, and I know you know that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, is, that is so neat. And look at so many people here on Wednesday night. What, what do you do on Sunday? Where, where are you going to put everybody? That's exciting to see the growth in this church. I see you've got prayer and praise on the walls here, and it's, it's like, you know, obviously you all know what it's all about. But um, I'm reminded in Matthew 5, I believe it is, to blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And, you know, I think, think of us being really thirsty, like if you're out in a desert and you're very thirsty or so hungry you can't wait for that next meal, to, to go after Jesus with all that. And, and I want to be that way. I want to always live hard for him. To, as they say, live hard for Jesus, though, that the way would be easy, rather than to try to live easy for him and the way would be hard. And I, I want to I always live hard for him. Amen. Thank you. Lord bless you, Sister Erickson. Hallelujah. There's simply no one else to pursue that has any value, anything good to offer. There's simply no one else outside of Jesus. I'm glad I'm in pursuit of him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Brother Erickson, we want you to come tonight and uh, minister to us tonight. Uh, he's a man of the word, and um, there's a lot of things we could say. Brother, I just want you to take your liberty, give you some time here, and uh, preach to us tonight. And uh, he, he may uh, challenge you. He may inspire you. Whatever the word does, he's just here to be an instrument of God, and we appreciate him lending himself to the Lord. He has a great family. Maybe he wants to talk about some of that. But uh, uh, some of you probably know uh, one of his sons, I think Brother Brandon does, uh, Chad Erickson. He's actually the, uh, the, I guess they call the national youth president uh, with the ALJC. And, uh, so he, and he's a great music director, does a lot of great things. And, um, so he's a talented family. We're glad to have you with us. Brother. God bless you. Preach to us tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, and our congratulations to the Billingsleys on, on five years uh, here in St. Joe. That's an awesome thing. And I'll tell you what, <clears throat> you all seem like a really nice group of people. And the Billingsley deserves a good group of people. So we thank you for that. Amen. We've watched them through the years and so faithful to God and to his kingdom and, and uh we're just, we're just thrilled for the Billingsleys here, to be here in St. Joe with you all. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's get right into the Word of God tonight. Uh, if you'd like to stand, turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Matter of fact, I'm only going to read the first part of it. It's a familiar verse. Hebrews 12 and verse 2. 
looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. I want to ask you tonight, where are you looking? Where are you looking? Amen. Pastor, would you pray? Amen. You may be seated. And we're here tonight in service on a midweek service because uh, we learn real quick in living for God that that, uh, we've got to be reminded all the time of who we are and where we're going, where we came from, so on. Amen. And so to talk about where are we looking, we find out that... uh, You know, we sang the songs tonight. We prayed in Jesus' name tonight. We are believers in the Word of God. And and yet, uh, there's, there's, there's that need to remember what to keep looking for. What to keep looking at. There's a need to, to keep our eyes on the prize, if you will. Amen. And, uh, there, there is, uh, there's a need for spiritual eyes tonight. You know, I, I love that song, Open the Eyes of My Heart. And we were, we were uh, doing a little devotion and with my, a couple of my granddaughters, and, and uh, they wanted to sing that song, and we sang that song. And after the song, I said, does your heart have eyes? Well, they didn't know what to say. But I guess, they, I guess it does. Amen. There's a spiritual vision that we have to have. There's, there's a need today through all the smoke, through all that's going on around us, through all the commotion, all the things. The Bible says we were made subject to vanity. That means life doesn't make sense. That means life is never going to make sense without Jesus Christ. And so tonight I ask you, where are you looking? Because the Bible says we ought to be looking unto Jesus. We ought to be always concentrating on Him. He's the source. He's the way. He's got the answers. He's got the power. He knows what we need. We're silly not to be looking unto Jesus constantly. Peter was doing really good. The Lord had come out on the, on the water, walking on the water, and and. Peter says, Lord, if that's you, bid me come to you on the water. And the Lord said, come on. And so Peter gets out of that boat. And the Bible says he began to walk to Jesus. But he got out there and the Bible says he got, he stopped looking at Jesus. And he began to look at the wind and at the boisterous the waves, and the storm all around him. And the Bible says he began to sink. See, this whole thing, this Christian walk, is designed to keep us on top. What what the faith that God gives us, we live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for us. That faith is to help us walk on top of the problem, on top of the storm. But we get to looking around and we get to getting our eyes off from the, the solution onto the problem and things go amiss. And Peter began to sink. And Jesus, you know, I would like to bend there because I don't know how far apart they were. But the Bible says Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. That might have been quite a sight. But the Bible says they went walking back to the boat together. And they get in the boat, and Jesus upbraids Peter. Where is your faith? I'm thinking, Peter walked on water. Woo! Peter, go, man, go. Instead, he gets spanked. And I... Come on, Jesus, give him some slack, you know. The dude walked on water. See, what Jesus was saying was, 
Where is your faith? Peter, how do you suppose that when you stepped out of that boat, who was it that kept you on top of the water? When you took the first step, who was it that allowed you and caused you to be able to walk that step on water? And the next one and the next one. See, what happens is we come into this thing and we have this newfound faith in God, but the world overwhelms us. The storms of life, the boisterous wind, all the elements that are always trying to trip us up and confuse us and bring fear into our hearts. And if we're not careful, we forget the source of our, of our salvation. We forget who it is that caused us to get here on Wednesday night. We forget who it was who brought us out of the world, who, who has healed our bodies, who has directed our steps, and all the things that keep us on top. And the same God that's brought you this far, he'll take you all the way. Amen. Amen. The little saying says, look around you and be distressed. Look within you and be depressed. Look to Jesus and be at rest. Now our nature. I want, I want to hear, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm on tonight, I want to hear an amen now. Our nature is to always go negative. It doesn't, it, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what the truth is. We're going to assume the worst. If you're not here Wednesday night, pastor, sister pastor, they're over here. Did I offend them? Did, should, should I not preach that? What? You're just, you're just home with a toothache or something. But they, you know, they're trying to figure out when can we go over there and apologize. We always, that's how we are. We always, we always think negative. When we hear something, we're expecting the negative. When we, 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 re, we react in the negative, that's, that's our nature. You know, this idea of rejoicing in the Lord and being, and, 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 uh, being positive and thankful for all things, that goes against nature. Well, we're, <clears throat> we're always looking at the negative. You know, if, if we get a problem, we, we, we get out our microscope and we check it out and blow it up higher power, you know, and, oh, this is really bad. Oh, a little more power. Do you know, do you know, ladies, right now, right now as I speak, on your eyebrows are tens of thousands of little critters. Yeah. <laughs> kind of makes you want to, kind of makes you want to itch a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> Tens of thousands. Now, Pastor, if we get a, get a slide and we could scrape off one of those little buggers and we could put them under our powerful microscope and we could blow that up to 100,000 power, you know, and I mean, that thing would become a hideous monster. It'd have things hanging off it. It'd have claws and little teeth. And, I mean, we could blow that thing up until it took up our whole vision. And this hideous monster is before us. Now, that's, that's, that's the ability that we have. We can take a little, little nothing. It was sitting on our eye, eyebrow just a few minutes ago, and it was minding its own business. We didn't care. But now all of a sudden, we got to ask the doctor, what can be done about those thousands of things on my eyebrow? <laughs> See, we, we blow it up. We accentuate the negative. We, 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 we concentrate on the problem. And the problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger until we don't know what the answer is. We don't know which way to... The doctor said it. The doctor knows what he's talking about. I looked it up in the medical manual. It's terrible. It's bad. 
we can't hardly sleep at night. We got our microscope out and we've, we've dissected it and we've looked at it from every angle and we know our problems well. Where God says, you need to have a telescope. And when, when that problem arises in your life, you get out that telescope and you look beyond the problem to a God that can solve it. Doesn't the Bible say something about magnify the Lord with me? He's looking for some people with a telescope that look beyond the problem and say, my God can handle it. Look at how big my God is. Everybody looked at the giant and said he's too big to fight. David had just come out of the hills playing his harp fellowshipping with God. He looked at that giant and said, he's too big to miss. It just depends on where you're looking. It just depends on what you're putting your concentration into. See? Instead of looking and magnifying the problem, God's trying to teach us to magnify him. You start, to, that's why we come to church. We come here with our problems. We come here with our heavy burdens. And something lifts off us. Something goes away because we're reminded we've got a God. We're not here alone. And our God gets magnified and the beautiful mu music. And, and, he, and all of a sudden our hearts are filled with him again. And we forget about the, the stuff. When you talk about faith, you've got to talk about Abraham. He was, the, he was the standard of faith. Matter of fact, Paul said that if you in 2013, well, 2012, almost 2013, if you are going to be saved, you're going to have to have the faith of Abraham. So when you, when you study Abraham, you're, you're finding out what God's expecting right now. you got to have the faith of Abraham. That's salvation faith. That's God-moving faith. Amen. God said, where you're standing, look north, south, east, and west. I'm going to give your descendants this land. God, God could, could trust. Abraham was a man, the Bible says, he uh, uh, sojourned in the land as in a strange country with Isaac and, and, and Jacob, the heirs of the promise. And the Bible says, for he looked, he looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. Jesus said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day and was glad. See, when, when you have a hunger for spiritual things, God's going to open your eyes. When you've got a hunger for spiritual things, you're going to see it. You're going to experience it. And if I can say it tonight, the spiritual world is more real than the natural world. We're here tonight because we believe in a spiritual world. We believe our hearts got to have eyes. we got to be able to see things. And Abraham, uh, his, his nephew Lot, the Bible says as soon as he got a chance, he pitched his tent towards Sodom. And he looked upon the well-watered plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. Next thing you know, he's in there. Say, sucked him right in. Because that's where he was looking. That's what got his attention. Abraham went around making altars everywhere he went. Abraham was looking for a city. Abraham said, this land, I'm just sojourning. I'm just a stranger here. I'm looking for something that God's doing. And so the Bible says in Romans 4, uh, talking about the faith of Abraham, who hoped against hope. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. He staggered not in unbelief, but was strong in faith, 
giving glory to God. Now, this is the faith you have to have today. He considered not. What does that mean? That means he didn't carry a microscope. He didn't try to figure out how his age and Sarah's age and Sarah's condition and all the, the, the negativity. He didn't carry around and he refused to consider the negatives in his life. Instead, he pulled out his telescope. He said, if God says it, I believe it. My God can do it. See? That's the faith of Abraham. You don't, you don't worry about the circumstances. You don't worry about what the doctor says, about the pink slip from work. You don't worry about the family problem. Instead of, instead of getting out your microscope and saying, oh, this is really bad, you don't consider it. You don't consider it. You keep looking at Jesus. You get your telescope out. You look beyond your problem. You magnify your God. Help, help me tonight. Help me tonight. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things seen. Not seen. Faith is in a realm of the not seen. You can walk out of here with whatever you need from God tonight. And, it's, and, and you don't have to see it. You can walk out and it can be just as sure as the sun coming up tomorrow morning. How many are pretty sure about that? Yeah. Unless we find out the sun's been taxed. <laughs> Second Corinthians 4.18 While we look not at things which are seen. Paul said, but at the things which are not seen. We're looking at the things that are not seen. We're not considering the things you can see. Why, Paul? Why would you be more interested in the unseen? For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. See, we got eyes to see things tonight that are eternal. What we're hooked up, what this church does for St. Joe and the surrounding area is bring into focus people's vision on things that are eternal. Woo! We better take this thing seriously. So what about, you know, when you talk about being seen, that's, that's, that could be sensed. That could, in other words, anything that comes against us, there are things that can be experienced. The doctor's prognosis, the boss's uh, pink slip, the family's argument, whatever it might be, the, the need for a better job. There's all kinds of things all around you. And you say, Brother Erickson, they're real. I can see them. Well, yeah, that's real, but it's not eternal. See, when you throw away the microscope and insist on a life of magnifying the Lord, and you get used to looking at things that cannot be seen, you start to realize, hey, pink slip can see it, temporal. Doctor's report, temporal. Car not working, temporal. This too will pass. See, when you get hooked up to an eternal God, when you start to have vision of faith, when you can have evidence of things not seen, you are stronger in faith, giving glory to God. Oh, God's looking for some folks in St. Joe that he can work through. They're not always trying to, trying to figure things out. They're just going to the Word of God and saying, if, if the Word says it, I believe it. I'm going to magnify the God of my Bible. I'm going to put him into shoe leather. <laughs>
I'm going to live him every day of my life. I'm going to magnify him, be strong in faith. And the things that I can see, the things that are part of this world, the problems, the, the pain, the sorrow, whatever, death, whatever it might be, these things are temporal. All I got to do is hold on to Jesus. Paul said, I cannot see. Ear cannot hear. It has not entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him. But he has revealed them unto us by his spirit. All you got to do have is open the eyes of my heart. Help me, Lord God, to see your kingdom. Help me to see what you're doing in St. Joe. Help me to be a part of what you are. Amen. And God, God loves that kind of thing. Adam and Eve, there they were in the garden. Beautiful. Everything for beauty. Everything for fruit. Everything uh, uh, there that God had prepared for them. And what did they do? They get over here in the corner someplace, and there's one lousy tree. All around them, beauty, food, pleasure, growth, fellowship. They even could see the Lord. But they got to looking at that old tree. What is it about that tree that we can't have of it? So that's the devil's job. The devil's job is to keep you looking at the problem. Here we are, children of God. And all we can do is pull out our microscopes and try to figure out what's going wrong and how bad it is. And the Lord says, my, you're my child. You got a problem? Tell me about it. The Bible says Moses endured as seeing him who is invisible. He got there on that mountaintop because he wanted to know God's ways. The Bible says God revealed his acts unto Israel, but his ways unto Moses. See, if all you know is God's acts, that probably just means that every time something goes wrong, you whine and complain and snivel and snot and make a big to-do until finally God saves you. And all you care about is being saved. You don't care about what's God's way. But, but Moses wanted to know God's way. He said, show me your glory. And from that point on, he never forgot what he saw. And he endured. Whatever came his way, he endured it because he knew what that God looked like. He didn't know what he looked like, but he knew his glory. He knew his power. He knew what God could do. And he endured as seeing him who is invisible. We need to somehow stay on our knees until we've got a vision, until we've got a good view, until we know who our God is and we understand his ways. Then we can go through anything and endure. When you look at the Exodus, there's a, an object lesson about your attention. They come out of Egypt. And we know the Bible says that Moses was out in front, but out in front of Moses was the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. In other words, they were following God. And God led them right down into a trap. Right down to the red, uh, edge of the Red Sea. And there was a swamp over here, and there was an uh, 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 Egyptian stronghold over here. And, and they'd look around. They, they got down to the sea, and there's nowhere to go. But they look around, and here comes the dust cloud. It's Pharaoh and his chariots coming out to take them or kill them or something. So they're, they're all looking at the problem. Oh, my God. Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, why'd you bring us out here to die? And, here, and, and, the, and the horns top the hill, and oh, it's terrible. We're outnumbered. They got swords and shields and all that stuff. Meanwhile, God's over here talking to Moses, saying, Moses, take your rod and stretch it out over the water. 
Everybody's looking at the problem. Oh, my God, what are we going to do? Oh, the kids, the kids. What about the kids? Water's part. A miracle's happening. A whopper of a miracle. You know, now this is just Erickson. Your pastor can straighten it out later on. But someone said there was at least two and a half million, maybe up to 12 million. We don't, we're not sure. People plus their animals. Someone decided on that low number, in order for them to get across the Red Sea in one night, they would have to be 10,000 abreast. Now, now, how far, you know, every, every picture we've ever seen of the parting of the water, the water's about as wide as this church. <laughs> right? Yeah. Question number two. If the water was stacked up that far apart, why would God have to knock chariot wheels off from chariots? Are you getting out of there? When that, when that thing collapses, I don't care how fast your chariot is, honey. You're not getting out of there. But what if? What if that water was so far apart that those wheels had to be knocked off to give the water time to catch up? And what if that water was so far apart that... Here you are. Oh, 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 oh. And someone elbows you and says, come on, we can go this way. Hey, sure enough. And you just start walking this way. And you didn't even know what happened. See, when all you're doing is carrying your, your microscope, all you're doing is trying to blow up your problems, all you're doing is trying to figure things out, you're going to miss out on some stuff. God's going to do some work in your life. And Pastor, do you wish you had a dollar for some people that come back with the same problem again and again and again? And God saves them again, and they don't even know it. They don't even know what salvation is. Because all they can do is look at the problem. So here's, here's the key. To live in for God. When God is leading you in a direction, he's out front, and you're following God, and it seems like you've come to a dead end, keep your focus right there. Keep looking right there at the problem because God's fixing to show you some things. Yeah. While you're looking this way, the army's still coming. But God's got an answer for that. And when you walk across the Red Sea on dry ground and not a drip of water visible, you'll know how powerful your God is. But they went through all those, those 40 years and never did learn. And, and when you insist on a microscopic mentality, when you insist, I've got to keep control in my life. I've got to have all my problems juggled. I've got to know what's a, what I'm in for. I've got to be in control of my life. When Jesus says, I want to be in control of your life. But when you insist on having that kind of a view, when you're, you're going to keep your eyes on the problem, then you, you have a, a chance of becoming like that generation that died in the wilderness. It says in Numbers 11, 5 and 6, We remember the fish which we did eat freely in Egypt, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. Now, frankly, none of those things would have turned me on. <laughs> we remember the Italian food <laughs> and the Mexican food <laughs> and the seafood. Yeah! yeah. Amen. Say, this stuff is this. We remember all that stuff. But our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna 
before our eyes. We're just so sick and tired of this manna. We've cooked it every way possible. We've eaten it. We're sick and tired. Look at it. It's all I can see is manna. That's why pastors are still around. See, it's job security. <laughs> All we see is manna. Man, if they would have done their job right, within a week they would have been in the promised land and they would have been eating honey and milk. If they, would let, if they would have magnified their God and said, the God that brought us out of Egypt, he'll bring us into the promised land. But see, of those 12 guys that went over there to spy out the land, 10 of them brought microscopes. Oh, my God. Look at the size of this giant. Look at these walled cities. Oh, they were outnumbered. We can't do it. Well, that's true. We can't do it. That's what, that's what living for God's all about. He does it. We're all miracles. Anything that's been conquered in my life is a miracle. Any change in my life is a miracle. It's because God could do it. But Joshua and Caleb, they went through there with their telescopes. Look at that fruit. That's the God who's going to give it to us. Look at this beautiful land. That's the God. Ooh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, let's rejoice in the God that brought us out of Egypt. And he's going to give us this land. See, it's just, what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to carry a, a microscope or a telescope. It's up to you. Where are you looking tonight? Are you going to magnify God with your life and watch him perform miracle after miracle after miracle? Or are you going to go ahead and accentuate the negative and blow the thing up until you got monsters in front of your eyes? I'm going to close with this. Eli Elisha was an interesting man. Uh, you know the story how that uh, Syria, the king of Syria, sent out bands to attack Israel. And every time they tried to attack Israel, Israel was ready for them. Finally, the king got all of his honchos together and says, which one of you is a traitor? Which one of you is telling the king our plans? And one of them said, oh, king, we're, we're all for you. But there's a prophet in Israel who's telling the king of Israel, what you're doing in your bedchamber. And the king says, well, where is he? Go find him. So the word came back, he's in Dothan. Well, go get him. And the whole army went down there and surrounded the town of Dothan. In the morning, Elisha's servant gets up there on the wall. And he looks out there, and the place is surrounded with an army. I mean, really, folks. Someone comes running in here. The church is surrounded by 10,000 armed, mean-looking men. And they mean to do us harm. You know, we got to, how would it be? Here in America, we don't know how that feels. He ran and got the prophet. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Now, the guy already had the answer. He, he, says, he says to his, his servant, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And then he prayed. Now, that's cool. That's cool. You know, pastor, we can agree together that we can take St. Joe. We've got the power. If God be for us, who can be against us? And that all sounds really good. But before I went out there and, and knocked on doors and did all kinds of stuff, I'd have to pray, oh, God, God, help me, right? Not, not, not the prophet. Elisha, this is his prayer. His prayer is not, oh, God, 
We're in a bad time. Things are looking bleak. We're surrounded by the Syrian army. I know that you're a mighty God. No, he's not doing any of that stuff. That's already here. He already knows that. He's already told his servant, there's more with us than against us. We got more on our side, on our side than they have on their side. Instead, he prays a simple prayer. Lord, open my servant's eyes that he can see the way things really are. And he looked again, and beyond the Syrian host was angelic hosts that way outnumbered the Syrians, and they were way bigger and badder. You see, the prophet already knew that. The prophet lived his life around that. He had eyes to see, and he already knew what was out there in the invisible. He already knew that he was basing his faith on things that you can't see. Let's all stand. 1 Peter 1 says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love. In whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice. You can rejoice. You can go through every storm of life rejoicing with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You can do that. All you got to do is keep your eyes on Jesus. All you got to do is stop that wicked heart from trying to accentuate the negative. You know, what if, you know, the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold tried in the fire? What if every time you went through a trial, every time you were in a trial, you went home, and there in the kitchen cabinet, you found a sack of gold. And you go through another trial. And you go home, and you open the cabinet, and there's another sack of gold. What would your attitude be about trials? I'm ready for another one. Bring it on. You and me, Jesus, we can do this. I'll build a bigger cabinet. <laughs> we'll start filling up the basement. Woo, I like trials. <laughs> Say, yeah, you, gotta, you have to understand that what God allows us to go through, he wants us to learn to have a telescopic attitude. He wants us to learn to look unto him, the author and finisher of our faith, He's the one that can get us through anything. He's the one that can get the job done. And just like Moses put that copper snake or brass snake up on that pole, and whoever looked at it was healed. This church in St. Joe lifts up a Savior to this community. If we can just get people looking unto Jesus they'll be healed. Looking unto Jesus, their lives will come together. If you've never uh, received the Holy Ghost, you're in a Pentecostal church tonight. We believe you're, you're, you're able to get the Holy Ghost just like the apostles did back in Acts. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues. That's still happening today. If you've never been baptized in Jesus' name to wash away your sins, this church believes in that because it's in the Bible. This is where you get Jesus in your vision. This is where you pick up your telescope and you start to live a life of magnifying the Lord. If you got problems tonight, and who doesn't? You got needs tonight, who doesn't? Why don't we come down to the front? 
why don't we just bring those things to Jesus? But come on down with a good telescopic vision. Come on down and magnify God. And let God get bigger and bigger and bigger in your vision. And then your problems will get smaller and smaller and smaller. Come on, make your God so big that you don't have a problem. Make your God so near that you don't have a care. Make your God so real. Come on, magnify the Lord with me. Let us rejoice in Him. Oh, God, there's nothing He can't handle. If you need the Holy Ghost, just raise your hands. Begin to worship Him. Begin to thank Him. Begin to tell Him you love Him. Oh, He wants to do something right here and now. He wants to move in your life. He wants to become bigger. He wants to become greater. Oh, give it to Jesus tonight. Look unto Jesus tonight. Tell him you're not going to look at your problem. Tell him you're going to throw away your telescope, your microscope. Tell him you've got only a telescope to magnify him. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Magnify him, saints. Get your eyes on Jesus. That's the answer. That's the answer. Step out in faith. Magnify him. Make him bigger. Oh, hallelujah. You may be down, but feel like God somehow forgotten. That you are faced with circumstances. Through. And right now it seems there's no way out, and you're going under. But God's proven time and time again to take care of you. Just how your heart has been 
author, he's the finisher of our faith. He is the Alpha and he's the Omega. We just need to keep our eyes on him. Thank you, Brother Erickson, for a wonderful message. Amen. It's, uh, it's inspiring tonight. Amen. It's, it's lifting our faith. Thank you tonight. We appreciate having you with us tonight. Thank you for being used to the Lord to minister to us tonight. How many feels blessed tonight? Well, we're blessed tonight. We're blessed tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, God is good. He's good. Amen. So don't forget the, the schedule of activities. We're still busy here at this time of the year. And um, remember those that need to see Sister Lisa about Temple Builders. See Brother Tom if you need to pay for your dinner for Sunday. Uh, if, if you're here and, and um, you didn't hear the announcement before, we'll, we'll not do this Sunday because we've got to get a cutoff here. But if for uh, those that want to attend the dinner and you're not able to pay all of it, if, you'll, if you're able to pay half of it, we'll try to get a sponsor for the other half. And so, But we need to know that tonight, and uh, we can let our catering service know how many are coming. Uh, praise the Lord. Well, love and appreciate you. Brother Brandon, come pray over us tonight and dismiss us. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, for this word of God. We thank you for this time. We have a fellowship of worship to your holy name, God. We pray that you help us not to look through the microscope of the physical, Lord, for it's temporal, Jesus. Help us look, God, through the telescope of the spiritual world, God, as we look forward to your soon coming, Jesus, and our life with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.